what's up everybody we're back our brand new episode of the last wave podcast we dive into topics like ghosts ufos cryptids nerd stuff and conspiracies as always thanks for listening it means a whole lot to us check out our facebook page as well as twitter instagram patreon our blog uh, our blog's been getting a lot of traffic lately thank you for showing the love on that i try to put up tons of interesting stories at least two a week um we have been adding some ads to that as well, but it's all stuff that we believe in and stuff that we have purchased ourselves for use in ghost hunting or just random things of that nature. So I only try to put up ads that I actually believe in. You know, I'm not going <clears> to <throat> try to stoop to that level. And honestly, I'm not making a lot of money from that. <clears throat> so either way, <clears throat> sorry about that. Thanks for listening. Uh, before we start... Um, a disclaimer on this episode, this is going to be an episode that I am uh, more or less nervous about doing. That's why the the title is kind of obscure. Um, a disclaimer, I, I am not crazy. I do not have any mental illness that I am aware of. Uh, my goal with any type of research is to simply find the truth, follow the threads as deep as they go, and see what is at the end. Um, I'm not happy just watching TV and letting the powers that be if you've been running if you've been listening to my short wave episodes then you know what is coming <laughs> you know what this episode is about to be about uh, i'm not happy just sitting by letting the powers that be run amok and do whatever they want so throughout this episode things are going to get a little crazy just bear with me and take away your own opinions and just be prepared good luck to all of us this episode is going to be about false flags today we're going to try to not to go too far however there are there is something that needs to be talked about and some of you may know what it is just by the title again it's a little obscure um, but i didn't want to put the actual words in the title i was quite nervous about putting about that um, i was afraid the video would get knocked off blacklisted what have you um, it's already hard enough for us to get you know for us to get recognition so um appreciate that just keep that in mind um it's hard enough for us to get found and uh, you just bear with me so uh, we're going to talk about today something called false flags if you don't know what that means it is the intentional efforts by an entity or government to use its power against its own people in order to achieve a certain outcome it sounds like a lot it sounds like a lot better way to say it uh, than what it actually is uh, if you put this strictly into layman's terms it's something a government or power does to make us believe something else by any means necessary and that is why i chose the kind of random <laughs> background image for today um, it's actually from assassin's creed i don't make any money at this point to get monet to monetize anyway so one of the key things about Assassin's Creed is uh, one of their mottos is nothing is true, everything is permitted. And that kind of ties in, I thought, fairly well to what we're going to be discussing today. Um, usually these are extreme, usually these are an extreme detriment to the people of the United States or other countries where they take place. We're going to go over some today that either I believe are examples of false flags or have been proven to be them. Before I get into this, again, a uh, warning, this will be offensive to some people. Uh, be aware that I am simply sharing information and observing inconsistencies in the explanation for these instances. I am upset and angry at these uh, things that have happened, but I'm going to try to look at them objectively and just remember that. <laughs> I'm, I'm providing information only. The first one is one that no one knows at least i would assume no one knows because it's a story that was related to me um i'm sure again if you've heard the shortwave episodes you know sometimes in this research in my fields information gets relayed to me by certain people and you meet people along the way that give you all kinds of stories so this was a story that was related to me uh, a couple years ago um but in in the grand terms of internet and media, this should be a very unknown story. Uh, in a former workplace of mine, 
there was a, a woman who relayed a story of her father's time in Vietnam. Her father was part of special forces, and I was told of some of their very intriguing missions. Her father was, as I said, special forces of a very high caliber. His team was responsible for certain attacks, one of which involved sneaking into an enemy camp, taking them out, which seems normal. However, the team's mission continued at that point. They were to exchange their gear for Viet Cong gear and weapons, then move to attack their next target, U.S. convoys. These special forces would then attack and kill other U.S. forces in order to push the cause, the cause being war. The soldiers would hear of this and people here at home would hear of these enemies viciously attacking U.S. convoys. Um, I mean, that all seems insane to me, but basically you're pushing morale, you know, just, you know, just like observing something bad that happens from, from an enemy far away. And you're like, oh, I can understand why we're at war. I can understand, you know, I want to get those people too. So more people join the army, so on and so forth. It pushes the war effort of the military industrial complex. And again, this is, this is stuff that you say that gets you what happens to what happened to Alex Jones. All their videos got pulled, blacklisted from YouTube, so and so. So hopefully that won't happen, but I'm tired of sitting on this kind of information and just, you know, just not being out. So it is what it is, but we're going to keep going. Um, she went on to tell me that sometimes the, the helicopters, um, you know, the classic you know, movie helicopters blaring fortunate sun going over the treetops would assist certain teams in missions, but not theirs. So the group was told if a U.S. helicopter spotted them on certain missions and say hovered, even to radio down and check in or to offer assistance, you know, say, hey, you know, how's it going down there? Platoon, blah, 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 something of that nature. The team was to take out the helicopter and, and and remove it basically to protect their own protocols and secrecy. So they would shoot down. They were told if they were spotted by their own team to shoot down the enemy helicopter or shoot down the U.S. helicopter, thus killing or at least gravely injuring, injuring their own team, their own teammates, more or less. So... These were the only two stories that this person relayed to me in great detail. Um, I was told that their father had managed to bring back a couple really cool guns from, you know, that were modified using like bamboo and stuff. Nothing crazy, but, you know, just that was just stories that were also told. It was more of a passing conversation. But again, you know, you have clear, a clear story that was told of U.S. soldiers attacking U.S. soldiers in order to push the war effort. So do with that as you will. Honestly, this is one of the least crazy ones we will discuss today. So moving on. Our next example happens just uh, in pre-Vietnam, <clears throat> but it makes our first story more prevalent. This is the Gulf of Tonkin incident, um, in which this is a more well-known false flag attack. This one is what well, we'll go into. In August of 1964, the Gulf near Vietnam, uh, in the Gulf near Vietnam, a U.S. destroyer was on maneuvers. They were monitoring three Vietnamese torpedo ships uh, that allegedly got too close. The destroyer fired, destroyer fired three warning shots, and the Vietnamese, Vietnamese ships responded with torpedoes. Boats were damaged. That was all resolved. <clears throat> However, it was claimed that a second attack happened. Uh, between U.S. ships and Vietnamese ships, Vietnamese attacking first. But years later, the truth came out through various sources and leaks, saying that the second attack never actually happened. And the two attacks were actually what led Congress into approving the war into Vietnam. So there, and just in these two stories, are two examples of the military-industrial complex putting the lives of Americans in open danger, resulting in the death of many, many people on both sides. There is a lot more detail for this one, uh, but we have a lot to cover today. So look into it online, uh, the Gulf of Tonkin incident. Again, there's a there's a pretty good amount of detail on that. That one's, since the papers have come out, 
uh, through leaks and stuff. A lot of people know about that one. So feel free to look into that. Uh, our next one is much, much more modern. Uh, the Las Vegas Country Music Show shooting. So this one is certainly an online conspiracy, uh, but I'm going to give my opinion on this. The main story is that during a large country music festival in Las Vegas, a single man stuck multiple cases and bags of high-powered ammo and weapons into an upper-level hotel room. And I don't know why I didn't mark the year. I believe this was two years ago. Uh, without being seen on a casino or hotel cameras. During the show, the man opened fire into the crowd from a window of the upper-level hotel room, killing 58 and injuring 413. Multiple other people were injured in the ensuing stampede, and so I believe the injury total was in the 800s of people total. Now, why, you ask, would one think this is a false flag? That's because it clearly is. It is very sad, but as I mentioned previously, it does happen. The shooter, apparently in his 50s and out of shape, somehow managed to get over 10 AR and military grade machine guns or machine gun weaponry. Uh, well, to be more exact, <clears throat> semi automatic military style weapons. Which I'm pretty sure by one of the pictures, there was an M249 saw, if I'm not mistaken. And that should be fully auto military grade. So I'm not sure if they're they're just you know trying to fool the public on that one or not. But either way, he got all these. He got over ten weapons, including cases of ammo, up to his room by himself with no one asking him if he needed help or noticing the trips, the numerous trips that this would have to take. <clears throat> then the crime scene photos show multiple weapons laying haphazardly around a dark room. Uh, from the bathroom to the opposite end of the room. Uh, bags, ammo, guns, all over the room. I mean, just thrown everywhere. So this man, in his later years of life, was able to move swiftly through a dark room, grabbing guns and firing at least semi-accurately as he moved back and forth through the dark room. Then once the shooting started, for some unknown reason, as if on cue, and as, I mean, this is as soon as the shooting began, it's just on point. Uh, the stage lights all lit up in a blinding white light. The bands bolted from stage. And the just the lights, they all came on in this one singular color. It was like spotting deer on the side of the road with headlights. Uh, it provided a perfectly lit target area for this allegedly single shooter who had no professional training, by the way. The mystery deepens when you look into multiple reports of multiple shooters, shooters within the crowd, and videos showing muzzle flashes from other buildings, uh, as long as well as other inconsistencies. So you have a literal mountain of evidence against the mainstream story. And why would the government want to do this, you ask? Bump stocks, which were reported on some of the weapons used, which allow semi-auto semi guns to fire faster, like fully auto weaponry, uh, as uh, were on some of the guns. As a result of this shooting, bump stocks were officially banned by the U.S. Justice Department the year following the incident. Now, no one talks about this at all. There is one. There is no one saying, "Hey, remember this." You know, it blows my mind as to how quickly these things are forgotten. I mean, you had all these people that died. <laughs> No good official story behind it. Um, it's just crazy to me. This one really, really, really frustrates me. Because, uh, like, these people didn't have to die for, you know, you'll see that a lot. You'll see a shooting happen, a law is passed. You know, boom, boom. Just, you know, it's put in motion. And, you know, believe what you will about it. There is no possible way. That this is not a false flag. There's just no possible way. You know, I'm in my 30s, and I would to get. I've been shooting before, and you know, I've carried multiple guns at one time. It's not easy. So to think that this guy carried bags, you know, it would have to be large duffel bags, or large Pelican-style 
army style cases into this room up and down elevators nobody asked a single question or raised an eyebrow at all i mean it's just and he was extremely far away so i mean i don't know think what you will again as i said at the beginning take away your own opinion but now you have the information and if you want to look into it it just look into the las vegas country music show shooting and you'll find all kinds of information you can find all kinds of reasons to believe why it wasn't portrayed and why it was a government setup. Either way, we're going to continue. The next one was officially confirmed and is a well-known false flag attack. Operation Northwoods was a proposed false flag operation against the Cuban government that originated within the U.S. Department of Defense and the Joint Chiefs of Staff of the United States government in 1962. The proposals called for the Central Intelligence Agency or other U.S. government operatives to commit acts of terrorism against military targets and give the appearance of terrorism against American cities or citizens, blaming them on the Cuban government and using it to justify a war against Cuba. The possibilities detailed in the document included the possible assassination of Cuban Im immigrants, sinking boats off of Cuban refugees on the high seas, hijacking planes to be shot down or given the appearance of being shot down, blowing up a U.S. ship and orchestrating violence, violent terrorism in U.S. cities. The proposals were rejected by President JFK. Imagine that. And you wind up know we knew what happened to him. Communists led by Castro had taken power in Cuba in 1959, which aroused the concern of the U.S. military due to the Cold War. The operation proposed creating public support for a war against Cuba by blaming it for terrorist acts that would eventually be perpetrated but sorry that would actually be perpetrated by the US government against its own people. To this end, Operation Northwoods proposals recommend hijackings and bombings followed by the introduction of phony evidence that would implicate the Cuban government. So yeah, there we have a documented official false flag when you want to look into false flags and see what they really are that is the cut and dry best way to describe it <laughs> i mean that's clear as you can get um i feel like i've covered quite a few important ones on this episode we're we're getting to the 20 minute mark i'm going to make this a two-parter uh, because there's a lot more and they get worse and the one i'm not going to bring up because it's a well we're not going to talk about it. It, it it happened in connecticut we're just going to say that we're not going to talk about that one because there's too much heat behind that one um no matter what side you take so we'll go into some other ones uh that have better evidence against them and we'll talk about that on the second episode of the two-parter but i've been really like frustrated with this stuff lately um, you can't have multiple officially confirmed ones like Northwoods and that kind of stuff and the Gulf of Tonkin and then not believe that other instances are just just by chance. Uh, that is the big that's just the biggest thing I could pass on just for everyone to understand that this these things do happen. Our government openly kills its citizens in order to start wars, pass laws, and who knows what else. And this video will probably be taken down and <laughs> and not be seen and our podcast may you know get knocked out but you got to try to get this information out and I'm, like i said i'm tired of sitting around on it i love doing the other episodes of like cool research into these weird little cryptids and things of that nature but this stuff has got to come out too I mean, we can't just let joe rogan you know take the brunt of it <laughs> can't just let him say everything and you know, we know what happened to Alex Jones when he started talking about this kind of stuff. So, in my opinion, it is a true concerted effort by the U.S. government. And I mean U.S. government, uh, not the United States of America. That's that's something that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, the United States government, that's why it's called the U.S. government. Because the, I'd have to find the information. I believe I may have mentioned on another episode, the United States is a 
is a copyrighted um, company created by European bankers in like 1800 or something. I, I'd have to look that up, but you should look into that. Look into U the United States is a company owned by European bankers. That will blow your mind. We're not the US, USA. That's why it's the US government, uh, US DOD, US Joint Chiefs of Staffs. It's the United States, not the US, United States of America. So that's a whole nother random story for another day. I don't want to keep ranting on these, but all this stuff is something that people should look into. It will infuriate you. All the crap we're force fed every day. I know that's what, like, what a lot of my episodes have been about here lately is me going off on these rants, but you can see the frustration. You can feel the frustration building in the fact that seeing all these things, knowing this information and just watching what happens to us every day and the petty little crap that we choose to follow and choose to believe in when there's so much more to worry about, <laughs> you know, we're worried about new flip phones and or not new flip phones. Good Lord. Worried about new phones and, new cars when uh, people are literally literally dying for pointless causes so just keep these things in mind look into these things if nothing more than to honor the people that you know went through them and try to keep your head up keep your head on a swivel as always thanks for listening throw a like and subscribe on the video Check out our blog. Tons of good stuff on there. Um, I even created a new section on the blog called The Archive, where I'll be posting handwritten stories. Um, I do dabble a little bit in story writing, as well as um, our just archive stuff, like research that we find, like cool documents. So all that good stuff. There's payment plans on there if you want to help out a little bit. But that's all I got for you today. Thanks for listening. Keep your head up. Things will be all right. We'll get through it. Stay strong. And thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time.